Hello, welcome. My name is Miriam. I'm a family therapist. Today I'm going to talk about OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder in children, teenagers and young adults. Um, in the last few months I've had more than usual um, parents coming to me and saying that their children are developing rituals usually around cleaning uh, because this is recorded on coronavirus days. Um, excessive cleaning, washing the hands for much longer than need to, um, having very long showers and baths, really trying to clean themselves. So I'm going to explain what OCD is. It's not always about cleaning, what it is, um, when do we know there is a problem and what parents can do to help the children. OCD is an anxiety disorder. It means that the person experiencing it is also experiencing a high level of worry, um, anxiety, nervousness. When people are anxious, they don't always develop OCD symptoms. Some children, some young people develop other symptoms. They may have a tummy ache or they may have sleep problems. I'll link to a video about it here. Or they can become very irritable and prone to tantrums and anger outbursts and some of them will develop what I'm going to talk about now which is OCD um, meaning that they get intrusive thoughts so very frequent thoughts about horrible things that may happen to them usually or to their parents and they develop rituals that are going to in their mind help them mitigate these risks that they're worried about. So sometimes the actions that they're taking is going to be related to the problem, such in the case of a virus and cleanliness. But at other times they will be busy rearranging things in a particular order, um, doing their routine in a very rigid particular order. So for example, getting dressed just this way, one item after the other, in this way, and not changing the order of it. Um, they may have no actions that are visible at all, but instead doing lots of counting and reciting of things and revising things in their mind where you're not going to see any visible action. And a lot of the times there would be a part of them that knows that it doesn't make sense but still they feel compelled to do it anyway so they often feel like freaks they feel that they're going crazy they can see other people are not like them they get really upset and distressed when they can't perform their routines and if we don't treat it and we don't um, address it when they are very young it can get a life of its own and the rituals that they're having could become more and more and more elaborate and it can in influence and involve more and more areas of their lives. So when do you know there is a problem? Regardless of the formal diagnosis, there is a problem when your child doesn't happily join age appropriate activities, when they are much more anxious than other children around them around these things, when these um, rituals and these thoughts in their head prevent them from participating and enjoying their young lives. So when that happens, this is the time for you to do something about it. So I'm going to suggest five things for you that you can do or consider to help your child. The first four you can do yourself. The fifth is about working with a therapist if you're not seeing um, the results that you want. How to work with a therapist, how to know who's a good therapist for you. So the first point to think about is that since OCD is an anxiety disorder, your child's probably quite anxious and you want to look and understand why. What's happening for them? What's not working in their lives? Are they struggling socially? Are they struggling academically? Is there any tension in the home? What is it that they need to do to relieve this stress? Is there anything you can help with? You also want to look into whether anything unpleasant had happened to them in the past because sometimes something that's happened before that shook their sense of being safe, shook their belief in people, that people or parents or adults are there to help, whatever it is, that can be a factor and even though they may be fine now and that whatever was happening is out of the way now it can still influence them. You also want to check what else is going on in the family in the sense that 
Are there other people in the family who are very anxious? Are there other people who've got rituals around various activities that don't make any sense? Is your child learning this from anybody else? So once you do this, you want to use whatever you can, whatever skills you can to tackle this general anxiety and that will reduce the OCD symptoms too. And I've made a special video just about anxiety, a link to it, watch it. My second point is about not getting upset with your children when they are um, having OCD kind of behaviors. It's not their fault, they're not doing it to annoy you, they're struggling, they're having a problem and you want to think about it like they're having a problem and you want to do your best to help them rather than there being a problem. So they are having a problem, not being a problem and we need to help them as much as we can. Third point is to talk to them not when the problem is happening. That's not a good time for any discussion but at a calm time, at a time where you could just go and have a chat and ask them what's going on, what are you afraid of, what's bothering you and how can we together help you reduce these behaviors and still make you feel safe so that you can enjoy your life more. What is it that could help? What times of the day are better for you? What times are worse? Why? I mean, children come up with loads and loads of really good ideas. Some of them say, you know, when I do this ritual, I want to um, go and hug my pet or I'm going to listen to my music or maybe I'll put some post-it notes in places where I tend to do these behaviors and they will remind me that I don't really need to do it this way or whatever it is work collaboratively with them you want to be a part of their team supporting them in getting better then my fourth point is whatever you do you don't want to collaborate with their rituals because I've seen it happen quite a lot that a child, for example, needs to go to school, you need to get out of the door, and he insists on checking his bedroom window yet another time. And you know there's no need for it, but sometimes you want to say, okay, just, just, just do it, we'll just do it. Or sometimes you even may do things for them so that they feel that, okay, that's been checked, so you will go and check something for them. And if you do that, I completely understand why you want to do it because you want to just get on with whatever you need to get on with. But for this short term benefit of being able to get on with your life, you lose something in the long term because your child's getting several messages. They're getting the message that it is important because you are checking or you are you're doing some of this routine too, so it probably has got value. And they're also missing an opportunity to learn that even if they don't do it, they're still going to be okay and life is going to be fine. So you sacrifice the long-term resilience of your child to fix the problem in the short term. And everybody does it sometimes, but you want to avoid it as much as you can and not collaborate, not take part in these rituals if you can help it. The fifth point is about working with a therapist because sometimes we're so in it with our children we are losing sight of what's right, what's normal, what's too much, what's not too much. And we need somebody who's experienced, who's seen many families, who's an outsider and isn't emotionally attached in the way we are that could be helpful to us. So if you're thinking of working with a therapist, I would suggest first that you um, meet that person first. Um, this is the way I work. I always see the parents first. This is what I recommend to all the people I supervise. That they first of all have a meeting with the parents to get all the background, to ask all the questions that need to be asked, and to sometimes give some ideas and some advice if there's room for it. So you want to check out this person, think, can they connect with your child? Are they likely to be a good match? And you can ask all your questions. Don't be shy. Ask. Do you have experience? Have you worked with this problem before? What were the results? What's the way you're thinking about it? How are you going to help your child? What's your plan? What do you think will help? And ask all these questions. If you get satisfying answers, go for it. Especially if it's a person that came already recommended from somebody else. 
So this is it for me. I wish you good luck. I really hope that um, you found something useful here. Please like, please subscribe to my channel. Let me know in the comments below whether you tried anything, what worked for you and what didn't work. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much. Bye for now.